So today we're going to enter the upside down where left is right, down is up, and where the Shimano rapid rise derailleur is still king. If you never heard of rapid rise, I don't blame you. Shimano introduced it in the late 90s and once again in the aughts. Both times it didn't really catch on and eventually they killed it off. If you're a big fan of Rivendell, however, then you know Grant has been working on a derailleur project. Uh, where they're basically trying to recreate the Shimano rapid rise derailleur. But what is a rapid rise derailleur? How is it different from a normal derailleur? And why would you want one? What are the advantages? I've been using this really hard to find XT rapid rise derailleur on the Suzy Long Bolts for the last couple of months. So I'm going to share with you guys my experience and uh, we're going to take it off the bike, compare it to a regular derailleur and see, and see what gives. If you guys enjoy this peek into the lesser known side of bicycling, uh, please consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or going to the merch store. We've got a lot of bandanas as well as our unserious cyclist patches and stickers. So what is a rapid rise derailleur? If you just look at it, there's no real kind of visual indicator uh, telling you that it's any different from a regular derailleur. I've searched and there's nothing on here that actually says rapid rise. What makes it unique is that the springs work in the opposite direction of normal derailleurs. So take for example, this Shimano Dior uh, norm, let's say regular derailleur. When there's no cable tension on it, the springs want to move to the smaller cog or the harder gear. This has a couple of implications. So if you want to get into a harder gear, since the spring is working in that direction, it's going to jump to that harder gear a lot faster. One downside, however, is if you know there's something funky going on with your shifters and it's not holding tension or it's not properly adjusted. We've, we've all been in that situation where you're putting down the torque and the gear slips and all of a sudden you're in a harder gear than you want. Contrast that with the rapid rise derailleur. So the default position of this rear derailleur is to move towards the larger gear or the easier gear. One way to think about it is that it just wants to make your gears easier by default. What this means is, let's say you're climbing up a hill, laying down a lot of torque. Instead of fighting against that derailleur spring to get into an easier gear, it's gonna help you out. It's gonna jump into that easier gear a lot easier. And once again, let's say you're hoofing up a climb, you know, your, your drivetrain isn't perfectly tuned and the gear slips. You're not gonna all of a sudden find yourself into a harder gear. But another implication of this is, let's say you're out on the trail, things go haywire. For, for whatever reason your shifter dies, the default gear you're gonna get is an easier one. I'm gonna show you guys how it affects shifting and, and where in some ways it actually makes more sense. This is a left thumb shifter put on the right side and turned upside down. This is its position where there is no cable tension. On a non-rapid rise rear derailleur, this would set your bike up in the hardest gear. However, since it is a rapid rise derailleur, you can see that it is in the uh, largest cog or the easiest gear. This is the default no cable tension position. So as I shift and pull cable, this actually shifts it into a harder gear, which is the complete opposite of other derailleurs. Shifting to lower gear, it's super easy. It wants to go there on its own volition. So not a whole lot of force to get it into a lower gear. Where it gets kind of interesting is if you compare it to the shift over here, this is shifting the front derailleur. In the no cable tension mode, uh, shifting it up, this drops it into the low gear and adding cable tension puts it to the high gear or big cog. So in essence, when you have a rapid rise derailleur, it matches how the front derailleur shifts as well. So, in, so when you're pulling cable, it goes to a harder gear. Likewise here, when I'm pulling cable, it's going into a harder gear. To get easier gears, it goes in that direction. And to get e easier gears in the front, you go in that direction. So they're both going in the same direction, whether you want easy or hard gears. So let's visualize what that looks like with some road shifters. This is the right hand drifter of some older Shimano Altegra. Currently, if you use a regular derailleur uh, to go into a lower gear, you would use the large paddle and that would get you easier gears. And then to go into hard gears, you would use the small paddle and that drops it to the smaller cogs. This is a left brifter that actuates the front uh, derailleur and it's the complete opposite. If you want a harder gear, you would use the big paddle 
and if you want the easier gear you would use the small paddle. With a normal derailleur setup uh, the paddles don't do the same thing. However, let's say Rapid Rise still existed and it played well with road shifters. Uh, if that were the case, the paddles would do identical things. So the large paddles on both the left and the right would make the gears harder. Smaller paddles both on the left and the right would make the gears easier. I don't know about you, but this actually makes a lot of sense to me. I think it's less intuitive that the big pedal on the right makes things easier, but the big pedal on the left makes things harder. The same size paddles doing the same thing to me seems more intuitive. And again, I know some people are gonna fight me on this, but if you think about it, what we consider intuitive now is just what came first. If for some reason Rapid Rise was introduced first and then we had this, you know, high, high normal, uh, rear derailleur introduced later, then, you know, people would say that this was unintuitive. And, you know, by virtue of this, it, I'd agree. So what do we have so far? A uh, rapid rise derailleur wants to default to the easier gear. It wants to help you when you're climbing and you're struggling to get to that easier gear easier. We've also learned that you basically shift in the same direction with thumb shifters, bar end shifters, and theoretically with brifters. That, the same size paddles will do the same exact thing. There is one thing I'm super curious about, and it's this. If this is a normal derailleur where it defaults to a larger gear when there's no spring tension, you see how it's all curled up? Does that mean when you have a rapid rise rear derailleur and it's off the bike and has no cable tension that its default setting is spread wide open? I suspect so, and I think that might be the main way to differentiate a rapid rise from a non-rapid rise derailleur, uh, but I'm going to confirm that. We're going we're gonna to pop this off and see what it looks like off the bike. I've released the cable tension, and you can see it's on the larger cog. So logic should hold that when I remove this, uh, it should stay open as opposed to a normal rear derailleur. I'm going to break the chain also. So here is the rapid rise derailleur in its resting position, and this is a regular derailleur in its resting position. So clearly one way to tell them apart if you find them in the parts bin is that uh, the rapid rise derailleur is already opened up. So looking at it, um, you know, they both have B-screws. There's a B-screw here, B-screw here, your limit, your set screws, as well as where you tension the cable. There's no other markings on the rear derailleur that say rapid rise so really the only way to tell is uh by taking it off the bike and seeing if in its resting position it's open or closed so i think what, what i'm going to do now is reinstall it and we'll see if it's any harder than any other rear derailleur there's been a, a lot of speculation as to why it failed and i think the biggest reason is that uh it was different. I can see if you're churning through bikes in a shop and one of these comes in, um, not that it's hard, but stops you from kind of just acting in autopilot. So that was pretty straightforward. It, it attaches onto the rear hanger, uh, just like any other rear derailleur. I'm gonna reattach the chain here. Chain has popped on. Okay, so, so far, not any harder in my opinion. I can see where it might be a little bit easier to reattach the chain when the default of this is in the smaller cog, just because there's kind of generally less tension on the, the chain. I just took the chain and it's resting on the, the bottom bracket. So it gave me the slack I needed. Back in there and we're back in business. Let's give it a shift. So there, there you go, first try. I might just throw in a couple turns just for fun. <laughs> All right, so I, I honestly don't see what was so difficult about that. Yeah, it's a little bit different. You have a little less slack when installing the chain. But other than that, I mean, you guys saw it, that this is practically real time and not a big issue. Okay, so having ridden with this trailer for the last couple of months, I'm gonna share with you guys some thoughts. First off, was it confusing? Yeah, at first, for like the first 
week of riding, but after that you kind of adapt. I will say if you have friction shifters and you jump from bike to bike to bike, uh, it does mess with your brain a little bit, but, but we're humans, we're smart, we can adapt. If you run friction shifters today, I think that's where you'll see the biggest advantage uh, because sometimes, I don't want, I hate saying this because people use it as a launching pad to tell me why friction shifters suck. But on the rare occasion uh, when your shifter doesn't hold enough tension and, and the bike does a ghost shift, usually that happens to me when I'm going slow up a steep hill and I'm uh, adding a lot of torque and maybe I didn't pull enough cable. This will ghost shift into an easier gear, which is actually pretty welcome. It's much better that it does that then jump into a harder gear and all of a sudden, you know, I may stall out and have to stop. I think if you use friction shifters, it has, you know, clear advantages. I didn't really notice a, a speed boost in, in shifting either way. To me, it was about the same for the way I ride. I think the advantage of the shifters shifting in the same direction for the same result, that's nice, but it's not an ultimate game changer for me. I think, you know, once again, you can adapt. We're, we're human being. I do like the idea that if something went wrong, uh, the default gear I would get would be the easiest gear rather than the hardest gear, which is pretty helpful if you do a lot of riding in the mountains. The big question is, is it worth it to change all your drivetrains to rapid rise, you know, search eBay and Craigslist and go dumpster diving to find some new old stock uh, rapid rise trailers. I think there are some welcome differences, especially if you run friction. And I would probably say no uh, for, for a couple of things. Not, not because I don't think this is a good idea. I think it's actually a, a pretty great idea. But modern derailers also have lots of nice features, which rear derailers of this era just won't have. Uh, you know, a big one is a clutch. So if you're riding rough terrain, it won't pop the chain off. Uh, that said, this XT1 has been pretty good. I've not had any chain drops with it. Another one would be capacity. Um, if you're going to use something like this for, let's say, a wide range one by, probably doesn't have enough chain wrap. You'd have to definitely use some kind of uh, hanger or something. That said, if a new rapid rise derailleur came out that was super high capacity and had a clutch, uh, I would probably buy that. If you see one worth trying out, uh, is it going to like blow your mind and, and change your worldview? Uh, probably not, but it would but it's also gonna make certain things nicer about your ride. I know in the comments, you know, people are already writing, you know, this is solving a problem that didn't exist or that this is just so unintuitive. But here's the thing, guys. Let's say we lived in the upside down where rapid rise came out first and this was the norm. And in 2022, Shimano came out with this thing, which makes your hardest gear, it's kind of default setting and unintuitively reverses all your shifting. I think people would be complaining that this was unintuitive or that this was solving a problem that didn't exist. To me, the biggest reason why this probably failed is that this came out first and this was different. It caused some friction in how to set up the bike. Not a whole lot, as you guys saw. Maybe it caused some friction in how people were used to shifting. But that's like me going to England and saying, you know, they're doing it wrong. They're driving on the wrong side of the road when, when it's just all a matter of perspective, depending on where you came from. So that's what I think. What do you guys think of the rapid rise derailleur? If Rivendell successfully comes out with one, do you think you'll get one? I think I will just for, for funsies support Riv. And I do think it does have some benefits uh, for me as a friction shifter user. As always, if you learned something new, found this entertaining, Again, please consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon, or stopping by the merch store, picking up some stickers and patches and all that stuff so we can continue to give you guys unique and independent bike content. As always, keep the self side down.